In this final version of the game, we've got a little cartoon character hitting the ball. No other change, just the addition of a cartoon character, but it, it adds a lot of life to it. So how have we done that? Let's have a look at our source file. If you, if you go in there, double click the character, you'll see that there's two bits of animation. There's a run cycle and there's a hit. A couple of little scripts. So if we open the actions panel, you'll see that that just loops back to frame zero. And after a hit, that loops back to frame zero as well. Notice we can't see the bat, but the bat still exists. It's just there. And our character has been positioned, so our zero, zero point is the same as the bat. With the, with the bat, we've simply made it a white colour rather than blue. And our character is, it will be positioned in the same place as the bat in the update method. So let's have a look at the code. Here we are looking at version four of the game. And you'll see that we've now saved a player as a property of the game. Player MC is our player animation. By default, it'll already be playing the animation of the run frames. When we do a new game, we're ensuring that the player goes to and plays zero. And when we do a game over, we stop the player doing its animation by doing player.stop. And when hit test evaluates to true, we do this stop player go through and play hit. So that'll give the impression that it's hit the ball. And the only other thing we need to do is ensure that the player X value matches the bat X value. And that's it. No other things needed. And there we are. You've got your first game. So in the next section, we're going to look at a more sophisticated game. A little pause there. See you in a minute. This video was from the course Create HTML5 Games Using Adobe Animates. To get the full course at a great discount, pull down the description and follow the link.